సర్వరూపరం శాంతం సర్వనామధరం శివం సచ్చిదానందమద్వైతం సత్యం శివం సుందరం విత్ లవ్ అండ్ గ్రాటిట్యూడ్ ఐ ఆఫర్ మై ప్రేయర్ఫుల్ ప్రణామ్స్ అట్ ద డివైన్ లోటస్ ఫీట్ ఆఫ్ అవర్ లవింగ్ లార్డ్ భగవాన్ శ్రీ సత్యసాయి బాబా ద ఎంబాడిమెంట్ ఆఫ్ సచ్చిదానంద నాలెడ్జ్ ఎగ్జిస్టెన్స్ ప్లస్ హు ఈ సత్యం శివం సుందరం truth goodness and beauty and who is all names and who is all forms at the same time who is beyond all names and beyond all forms dear brothers and sisters loving sai ram to all of you this is a special occasion where we express our gratitude and love to bhagwan satya sai baba for what he has given us and sacrificed for us and for our redemption the millions of devotees and followers of baba all over the world including india are observing a special 30 day intense sadhana sadhana of love through worship and work and study of his teachings to express their gratitude and love first i want to remember what who he is and his message and his works swami is the incarnation of love the god who is beyond name form and attribute has taken up a beautiful form with a sweet name for our redemption he is an incarnation of love his love and glory is infinite and unfathomable as bhagwan said the moon can be seen only through the moonlight similarly his love can be experienced only through divine love but to remember who he is only way we can remind ourselves through his discourse what he has given on may 17th 1968 in the first world conference where he said it is this human form in which every divine name and form attributed by man to god is manifest and let not any doubt distract us second profound message he has given this discourse is no one can understand is reality whoever it is whatever the method of inquiry and even if the whole humanity is combined together with thousands of years of austerity but we can all experience his love and enjoy his love and get benefited therefrom and third important message he has given is the only way to reach the goal of life the samam bonam of life is implicitly and faithfully practice his divine commandments so another important thing we need to remember is the letter he has written on may 25th 1947 written to his brother but interestingly he addressed saying to all the devotees so this is message for all of us there are also two important points we need to remember he said he has come to confer bliss on all of us bliss the ananda and second is to get rid of the grief and suffering of humanity this is the mission he has revealed this glorious mission now is manifest in various ways in 123 countries including india and through various institutions and swami has established the educational institutions where from the primary to the doctoral studies the education is provided free of cost but the here not only the academic excellence is emphasized but excellence in character is very much promoted and these graduate from these institutions become the exemplary citizens and beacons of love and light and similarly based on this around the world there are many satyasai schools 
and educational institutions and education human value programs promoting Satisai education. In addition, Bhagawan has established various medical institutes where from primary to the secondary to the tertiary care is given completely free of cost with love and compassion. And not only this is free of cost, but is state of the art health care is given and preventive health care is also emphasized. This is provided through various general hospitals in India, which he started in the beginning. And then subsequently, there are super specialty hospitals where the complicated surgeries like neurosurgery, cardiac surgery is provided completely free of cost. Inspired by this, in many countries around the world, the medical services are provided by the volunteers through medical camps, medical clinics, the mobile clinics, and the health education. And in addition to this, many humanitarian service programs, community service projects were started by Bhagavan and inspired by that, many programs are undertaken around the world, like providing shelter, clothing, and food to the needy. And also, more importantly, providing portable water to millions of people who did not have access to the water. This is started in India. Now, inspired by this, we also have various projects in different parts of the world, like in Africa, El Salvador, and in Indonesia, and other countries. The, another great gift by Bhagawan to the humanity is the Satya Sai Organization, Satya Sai Organization of India and Satya Sai International Organization, where Swami has given a clear mandate, the purpose of this organization is to make us realize our true nature, our innate divinity, that we are the embodiments of divine love, we are the embodiments of divine Atma, that is what he has come to show us so that we need to practice that. And at this juncture, I want to emphasize for many of us who remember this April 24, 20, 2011, where he left his body, many of our people were grief stricken because we lost to witness that beautiful divine form. And uh, But let me remind myself and all of you that he has gone nowhere because he is our eternal companion. He was with us, he is with us, and he will be with us. During my travel last year for the various pre-world conferences, we had about 18 of them, I have seen many devotees sharing the glorious experiences where they still experience Bhagawan's presence, his love and his guidance. So let us always remember that he is with us at this time. Lord Krishna said in Gita, avajananti mam mudham manushim tanumashitam param bhavam majananto mamabhuta maheshwaram. These ignorant human beings think I am also the embodied human being. They don't realize my all-pervading divine nature, that I am the Lord Supreme. Similarly, Swami in many of his discourses has reminded us that he is not that limited physical body, but he is the all-pervading reality. But sometimes in our ignorance, we are in our attachment, we forget that reality. Yes, we love this beautiful form and sweet name, but as, let us remember that he is that ultimate, all-pervading reality, eternally present with us all the time. So how to experience this wonderful divine love? As I said, Swami has said, you can see the moon through the moonlight. Similarly, the divine love, you can experience only through divine love. And Swami is very practical divine master. He has shown us the way. He has shown us the practice of this is through human values. He calls this education human values, EHV. Swami calls that 3HV, that is development of the head, heart, 
and the hands. That is why we have three devotional, three wings in the international organization. That is devotional wing, service wing, and the educational wing. That is why even in our sadhana of love during these 30 days, we emphasized all the three aspects of sadhana. That is head, heart, and hands. For example, how the hands should be used. Swami says, hands that serve are holier than lips that pray. Swami wants us to be involved in selfless service. That is why the devotees and the volunteers all over the world are constantly engaged in various service projects. But in this aspect, we should remember two important messages Swami has given. One is the process is where at the ultimately we realize the service is by God, to God, and for the glorification of God. In this process, we realize we are really serving God, not somebody else. That is why the term Narayana Seva, the serving God. This reminds me of what Jesus said, when you serve the least of your brethren, you are serving me. So we are serving God. We should clearly rem remember when we do service, we are serving God. And second important aspect of service is the volunteers are called Swayam Sevak. That means we are transforming ourselves. It is not for the benefit of others. The purpose of service is for our own self-transformation. This is show in our life. That means we sh the service, the more we do, we should have our less ego. So less attachment, less pride. And one of the major weaknesses which we can get rid of through service is finding faults with others. This is the major obstacle for a spiritual seeker, criticism of others, finding faults with others. Swami said, whenever you find faults with others, you really take their bad, bad karma and you lose your good karma. So let us be always be aware Never be judgmental, be critical, and finding faults with others. Next is development of the heart. Swami says this is the very important thing. Our heart should be filled with love. So Swami said expansion is my life. That is why to develop the heart, Swami has given importantly Namasmarana, remembering his name. And that is why we do the japa and the bhajans is for that purpose and also dhyana, the meditation, so that we are in touch with that reality. When we do really these devotional practices, how do we know we are doing is our heart becomes pure. As Swami says, purity is enlightenment. The minute we are pure, we are enlightened. That is why Lord Jesus has said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So the proof we have that we are developing in our devotion is getting rid of these negative qualities. As Swami says, Kama, Krodha, Lobha, Moha, Madha, and Matsarya. So get rid of our desire, anger, greed, attachment, pride, and jealousy. As Swami beautifully says, just having a wrong desire, Ravana, such a great scholar, devotee of Lord Shiva, well versed in Vedas, he was destroyed. Just having greed, Duryodhana, very powerful one, he was destroyed. Having anger, the uh, great uh, um, Hiranyakashipu, he was Swami says he was another, one of the greatest scientists ever known. He could conquer all the three worlds, so he was destroyed. Now we can imagine our state. If we have all the three, desire, anger, and greed, what is our fate? So we should be really alert. And of all that, the even more important is jealousy, the last one, Matsarya. Swami says God is omnipresent and also jealousy is omnipresent. We should be always be aware. Swami compares jealousy to a root insect which will destroy our very root and one day even a big tree will fall. So let us be aware and get into the qualities. And next one is the process of education. In this, Swami says the education is studying deep the divine teachings, more importantly, putting them into practice. Swami's every word is like a mantra. 
Swami's every sentence is like a sutra, aphorism. Every conversation of Swami is like a Gita and every discourse of Swami is like a Veda. So his words, his teachings are the quintessence of all the scriptures. What all we need to take is take time to dive deep into them and practice them. To our good fortune, this is the unique avatar where his words are recorded both in audio, video and available as Satya Sai speaks and his writings in the Vahinis. And some of them are also available in e-books. So I would encourage every one of us, this is a part of the Sadhana of Love program, to study his literature every day and imbibe the teachings. When we do that, when we practice, Swami says three-fourths of spirituality is enquiry. So when we do this enquiry, who am I? Then we realize there is only one thing exists, divinity and nothing else. Swami says this unity is divinity. We need to experience unity, unity at different levels. Unity at the individual level, where we express, see the unity of thought, word, and deed. And then unity at the family level, unity in the organization, and more importantly, unity in the whole creation. Where Swami beautifully says, you should realize there is nations are many, earth is one. Stars are many, sky is one. Parts are many, clay is one. Beings are many, breath is one. Flowers are many, worship is one. So try to see that unity in diversity. That is why beautifully Swami wrote a Telugu poem where he said, Sarva Vedanta Grandhala Saramella Vokka Vakyana Chepudun Okasari Akila Bhuta Mulanduna Atmani Vu Vokate Ani Manasuna Teliyavalayu. He says, I am going to tell you in one sentence the essence of all Vedanta that to realize there is only one divine principle, the Atma, existing through all creation, in all beings. Once we re realize that, then we realize the goal of life. How do you know? As I said, we practice this various aspect. As I said, education, human values, developing of head, heart, and hands. Swami said you should have hands of a Janaka, heart of a Buddha, and a head of a Shankara. When we have that, we reach the goal of life. And that will be expressed in two signs. Number one, when we progress spiritually, number one, we lose the fear. As Swami beautifully said in a Telugu poem, from the birth to death, man is fraught with fear. Fear of losing health, fear of losing wealth, fear of losing beauty, fear of losing youth, fear of losing family and family friends, who, the loved ones, and ultimately fear of losing life, that is fear of death. So the whole life is fraught with fear, but when we have God with us, we have no fear. That is the sign of a real, sincere, spiritual aspirant, fearlessness, abhaya. That is why in every avatar, in every incarnation, they have two hands, God, abhaya hasta, Varada Hasta, with one hand says be fearless, with another hand gives the boons, fulfills the wishes of the devotee. But this unique avatar, Swami, we have seen many times, Ubhaya Hasta Molato Abhaya Mitsubi Budu. He says with both hands he bestows fearlessness to us. That is why the famous song, Why Fear When I Am Here, Swami said. So we should have that fearlessness that he is with us all time and nothing will happen with his being at our side. That's why he says, is above us, below us, before us, behind us, inside us, outside us. So we should have this conviction, don't be afraid, he's always with us. Second sign is peace. As the proof of rain is the wetness of the ground, similarly proof of our spiritual practice is the peace what Lord Jesus calls peace that passeth understanding. And we have seen Swami labeled the holy place in Prashanti, Prashanti Nalayam in Puttaparthi. That means it is not Shanti Nalayam, it is not abode of peace, but Prashanti, abode of supreme peace. Swami coined that word for a special purpose. This is the peace which is not disturbed. Other peace comes and goes, 
but this prashant is the supreme peace is all abiding everlasting so that is what we should aspire for though it is a beautiful place in prashant in alayam in puttaparthi where we get our spiritual batteries recharged but swami has reminded at one time every heart of ours should become prashant in alayam we should be all the walking temples of this abode of supreme peace then we read, read not only we enjoy that peace and we radiate that peace around us so i pray to bhagwan to bless all of us with the strength so that we love god with all our heart mind soul and strength and to realize that we are the embodiments of divinity we are the embodiments of that divine love and divine atma thank you jai sai ram